please, you may take your seat. Briefly. Okay, good. So that's the timer there. Amen. I was running to come to hear the first speaker so that I can take a cue from some lines of thought. I love building because the Bible says it must be line upon line and precept upon precept. And I'm so glad that I came in while Pastor Samuel was still ministering. Um, I think the building is going to be solid uh, because while he was ministering, I was just laughing while I was seated. So we're just going to experience a continuum. Amen? He talked about infiltration, infiltrating systems, and that most of the time God puts us in a place or God plants us in a place because he wants us to infiltrate the system. And I think he's an embodiment of that message because I'm aware that he just moved into this country. And while he was talking, he said something that was very powerful. An only child, not just an only child, but a child that was waited for. A child that you prayed and wept and trusted God for him to come. And so it would be very difficult for, for that kind of a child to be released. But he said, sons are not raised in a home. Have you? Son, raised at home. So you will need to release them at some point. Because every son is a father. Every son has a DNA of fatherhood. And every mother, every daughter is a mother in the making. Praise the Lord. So I'll take a cue from the scriptures that we're looking at this evening, which is Joel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. Um, God's end time army. Joel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. Our Father and our God, as we look into the perfect law of liberty, I ask that as we behold you, you will address every aspect of our life that need to take dressing. You will provoke us into taking tangible steps of, and actions that will bring about the recovery of that which you are. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oof. Can you just take a deep breath where you are? I sense God healing somebody now. Can you just take a deep breath and just breathe in and breathe out? There's someone here that will testify in the next couple of days. There's a healing power available for somebody's health now. And I don't know what the... Can you all hear me? Okay, please. Can you just take a deep breath? I want to follow what the Holy Ghost is telling me to do now and just breathe out. There is somebody here that God is healing. I don't know who the person is, but before the end of this meeting, it will be clear that this exercise was instructed by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that whoever this person is and whatever the situation is or the situations are, whatever the conditions are, the Lord, you will bring a supernatural healing now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree, declare, and I prophesy that every form of sickness, ailment, terminal disease, right now be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh. Lord, release your hand upon that confused soul. Let direction come now. Let direction come in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that the weight that is upon the chest of this one as a burden, Lord, let that weight be diffused now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that weight diffuse now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to your battles. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I speak to you today from Job, um, Exodus 14, 14. 
hold your peace for the battle is of the Lord and I speak peace into that battle right now whatever battle you are going through now I speak peace to it in the precious name of Jesus Christ I, I want to announce to you that you will have the last laugh I don't know who I'm talking to but you will have the last laugh I said you will have the last laugh right now you are rising above the squabbles of life you are rising above the pain you are rising above the conspiracy in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is bringing you out the Lord is bringing you out in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father in Jesus name we pray all right I'll hold my peace a little bit if the Lord will allow me hold my peace to go into scriptures and if he doesn't, don't think that I don't know the Bible, I'm looking for a way of escape, okay? Um, thank God that the pastor has preached a little bit. He, I, I'm just sensing a very strong prophetic oil. And I don't want to enter into it because if I enter into it, we will get lost in it. Um, but can I, can I just be myself? Can I flow in the prophetic? All right, good. So, um... You see, I've been looking at this couple since. You can hear me, right? You don't need an interpreter. Okay, good. There is a major shift coming to your life. I don't know if you've got children, and I don't know if you don't want to have children, but while I was seated there, I saw you carrying a boy. And the Lord told me to tell you that the name is not the name that you want to give the child. Is the name he wants to give him. While he was speaking, the Lord said to me that you are going to have a man child and his name shall be called Moses. And he spoke about Moses. So he said, You are going to have a man child. I don't know you, I've not met with you, but he's going to give you a man child. And his name shall be called Moses because at the time she conceives, the days of your warfare are ended. Say it's the Lord. So he's giving you a man child and his name shall be called Moses. And that's because the Lord is giving an assignment to you as a family. And in the day of our conception, the days of your warfare are ended. And a new season, a new chapter is open unto you. Say it's the Lord God Almighty. So it's a new season. And the Lord said, quit complaining. Quit crying and now start praising me because I'm stepping into the terrain and I'll begin to reign over your lives say it's the spirit of God I, I hope you can receive prophecies here I see someone who is into a property market uh, who is a realtor a realtor you, you deal in property and um, it seems as though for a long time there's been resistance a realtor a realtor somebody who is a realtor and is into sales of property and there's been a level of resistance but I hear the Lord say I should say to that person that a new season begins now so if you know you know one of the ways to receive when this kind of things open is for your spirit to be alive if you are not hungry to receive I'll shut it down if you are not hungry to receive we'll just Close it and we'll do the work. No, it's not in, it's not in your shouting. We will, I, I actually will know. I actually will know when your spirit begins to connect my spirit. Uh, this thing is a ministry of life. So when life is coming and it's not being received, the speaker knows. So I know, yes, you can suspect me a little bit. That's fine. And it's okay. Please suspect me. But suspect me with your spirit. Follow me with your spirit. If my sp your spirit accepts me, then open up. Okay? So there's this realtor in the building that um, has been going through a lot of stress and no, no, nothing is, has worked for some time now. But I want to bring you the word of the Lord. I'm going to be here till the 29th of this month. And I want to tell you that before I leave, you will have two major testimonies. I, I, I don't I don't know who I don't know who this person is 
And you know, I don't want to call you out because that's not what I'm here for. But I want to say to you for real that God is going to give you a major, major testimony. All right? Maybe I'm speaking about your husband. God is going to change the situation. God is going to come true for that man in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody shout amen. If you believe it, shout amen. Okay, now I want you to prophesy that, Lord, my season of change has come. Can you open your mouth and say it louder that, Lord, my season of change has come. Come on, say it louder. My season of change has come. In this season, I will see your hand. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a people and a strong. There had not been ever like ever delight, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of the chariot on the, on the top of the mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like the men of war and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Help me say to yourself, if I fall upon the sword, I will not be wounded. As I journey through life, as an end time army there shall be no injury there shall be no affliction on my investment in the name of Jesus mobilizing I would like to call or title this message mobilizing God's end time army is a mobilization of the armies of God and when you look at the opening of the scripture, when you look at the armies here, and you look at history, the book of Joel shows us the kind of army that God was raising here. At the beginning of this prophecy, you would have thought that God was speaking about protecting and projecting his people. But unfortunately, if you dig deep, you would realize that this prophecy was a double-edged sword kind of prophecy. It was a prophecy that captured the life of God's people as well as the people who dealt with God's people. The people who dealt with God's people, the Lord came and spoke words of confirmation, words of affirmation in Joel chapter 1, speaking to the children of the Lord, speaking to the children of Israel about how much he was going to rise up on their behalf and deal with the people. But all of a sudden, there was a flip. And this flip was now no longer about prophetic punishment to the people who were against the children of Israel, but now it's about the people to whom God said, ye are the apples of my eye. To whom God said, I am jealous over you. To whom God said, you are my inheritance. You are my heritage. To whom God said, you are the apple of my eye. These are the people God is speaking to. That a time is going to come that I will raise an army that will speak against you 
and fight against you because you are not willing to do my bidding. And the only way that God was going to get the attention of his people in order to bring them into alignment or repositioning, this is not about promotion. This is first about being reawakened. This is first about a call that has existed. This is not an upgrade. This is a call to what? To restoration. If you must do anything with me, and if I must do anything with you, I will need to bring you back to the state wherein you can be usable, wherein I can mobilize you, wherein I can empower you. And the only way to do it, the fastest way to show that I am merciful to you is to bring my judgment. So if God wants to show you his mercy, he will bring his justice. The justice system of heaven is the fastest way for heaven to show its mercy and judgment. So he began to speak and he said, sound the alarm. The alarm was in twofold. There are twofold alarm here that I want to show you. Number one of the first alarm is the trumpet sound. Somebody say the trumpet sound. He said, sound the alarm in Zion. So there is a sound of the trumpet and then there is an alarm. There is an alarm which I think my brother mentioned earlier so he touched it yesterday. A call to the awakening. When God begins to set alarms, the Bible says, blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. So sounds, if the Lord says that I want to bring revival to Canada, which is what God is saying in this season, if God wants to bring revival, the first thing that happens is sound will go before the actual revival. In fact, there are three major ways of knowing that we are at the threshold of revival. There are three major ways. Number one, there will be the release of sound. Three ways to know that we are at the threshold of revival. There will be the release of sound. And this sound will be unique. This sound will be distinct. Number two, there will be the release of prayer clusters. Somebody say prayer clusters. Prayer clusters will no longer be a thing. Prayer will no longer be a thing of we come to church before we pray. Prayer will no longer be a thing of you see somebody just praying with his wife. Prayer will be a thing, a burden, will be a concern that we will need to have prayer clusters. When you move around the streets, maybe from this street to the other street, you will see two or three persons galloping in prayer. You will see people holding hands, praying the prayer of agreement. You will see people who will look at brothels and look at places and no longer say, oh, God is not here. This place is an accursed place, holding their hands there and releasing decrees over that place. So you will see sound being released. You will see what? Prayer clusters being formed and forged on different places, different corners and different corridors. You will see basketball, I mean, you will see football pitch. You will see the football tops, people standing there and praying that if people are going to be here doing whatever they do, that the hand of God will come upon them. You begin to see people engendering prayer. Prayer becomes a lifestyle. Prayer is no longer burdensome. Number three, there will be release of songs. So if you are a very spiritual person and you are very discerning, you and I will know right now that even though Africa seems to be the way it looks now, you will know that there is revival breaking out in Africa. Because these three things I mentioned are there. You will see the hand, and, and, and you know when you come to places and you say, oh no, the reason why you guys are praying is because you, you don't have options. You know, you don't pray for light here, is that correct? You don't need to pray for life. I mean, I was in England some time ago, and I got to the train station, and I said, oh, Lord, I just pray that I will, I, I, I have not missed this train, and that the next one will come on time. As I was saying that, the next person by my, by my side just said, you don't need to pray. The train will be here on time. <laughs> did, you get, did, did you get my illustration? He said, no, you don't need to pray. The train will be here pronto, at time, on time. And I said, okay, and truly, that was my first time in England. And the train was there. So you see, that aspect of prayer is not needed. I'm saying to you that we, praying people don't pray for things. Praying people pray for eternal reality. Praying people pray for the establishment of the counsel of God and the will of God. 
And that is why prayer is not an option for the believer. Prayer is old school, but prayer is also new school. Prayer is the greatest and the strongest weapon that the Lord has given to the believer. Prayer is the strongest and the greatest weapon that has been given to the believer. Why do we pray? We pray because we depend on the Lord and on his strength. Why do we pray? We pray because we know that when we pray, there is a God that answers. Why do we pray? We pray because every time we open our mouths to pray, there is feedback from heaven. Somebody say feedback. But most of the time, these days, we no longer receive feedback because we don't even know how to prosecute prayer accurately. So if you look at what is going on in Africa today, you will see sounds coming out. I mean, when I gave my life to Christ, Pastor Ben, when I gave my life to Christ many years ago, I couldn't listen to songs from home. I only listened to people like Domoe and Bob Feet. Um, what was this man's name? We enter the holies of holies. Uh, Paul Wilbur. But today, I listen to Dunsin. I listen to Theophilus Sunday. I listen to Nathaniel Bassi. I listen to Mercy Chingwo. And you cannot be complete outside of anywhere in the world where you are. You can't be complete in trying to listen to the current heartbeat of God with regard to worship if you don't listen to these names that I've mentioned, Victoria Orenze, you will listen to them. And then we have our brothers in South Africa. We have our brothers and sisters in Kenya. You will know that the sound of revival, the alarm clock is in Africa. And that's because God is moving. God is marshalling and channeling and funneling a people from the, the, the hiding place. Men who you've never thought will be able to run errands for the kingdom are becoming errands men, errands boys for the Lord. So he said you will sound this alarm and the first alarm is the alarm of the trumpet. What does that alarm do? The alarm of the trumpet is a call to action. The alarm of the trumpet is a call to action. When the Lord sounds the trumpet, is calling his people to an action. He's calling the people to stand upon their walls so that he can do what he wants to do. When God sounds the trumpet, that is why every time you see the trumpet, I hope you know that the trumpet is a wind instrument. Are you with me? We have drums. We have keyboard. These are strings. This is a string instrument. All right? But the trumpet is a wind instrument. The trumpet gets its coordination when you blow into it. When you blow into it, it begins to get, it begins to create the needed sound. It begins to bring about mobilization of people that will stand upon their watch to take an action. So the first trumpet there that sounded from the alarms of heaven, when the Lord sets an alarm, and that alarm is coming in form of a shofar, in form of a uh, of a trumpet it is a call unto action God wants us to take action and, and I said to you that the trumpet is a wind instrument, is that not so? if the trumpet is a wind instrument what does that mean? it means that one of the alarm that we receive in our spirit is the alarm of the Holy Ghost the sound, the trump of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is likened to a wind John chapter 3 Quickly, John chapter 3. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Oh, I'm too fast. Am I too fast? The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it, and whither it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Anyone that is born of the Spirit is not predictable. What you see from a spiritual man is not predictability, but effect. Somebody say effect. When a believer comes to a place and they say, this is what he will do, you are not born of the spirit. A spiritual man is not predictable. The ways of a spiritual man are the ways of the Lord. You know, how many of you know that God can say yes and no at the same time? God can tell you, hey, Pastor Ben, Go now, and he said, I changed my mind. Come back. 
What do I mean? Ask Hezekiah. Ask Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah to put his home together. For today, I'm calling him home. The Lord told him that. Right? And then he was on his way. And he told Isaiah, Isaiah told Hezekiah that the Lord said you should put yourself together because he's calling you home. The man didn't weep. The man only turned and called into witness his labors before the Lord. I said, remember me, I have labored over this nation. I've worked with these people. I mean, how can you just take me out like that? While Isaiah was on his way home, the Lord told him, go back and tell the same man you told that I will kill him, that I've changed my mind. I'm giving him 14 years. What kind of a prophet will you be if the Lord tells you a word and you are saying, thus says the Lord. And before you go to bed, the Lord says, I've changed my mind. Do you understand this? That's the way of the spirit. That's the way of the wind. The wind blow it where you least expect. In other words, you cannot tell the source of the wind, but you can tell its effect and its impact. This is one of the reasons why every believer operates beyond attack. Because once the enemy thinks he has gotten you, at that point he has failed. The very moment you are discouraged, a wind blows. And when the wind blows into you, you realize that you have the strength and the resilience of the spirit. That what is powering you, what is piping through you, is not just your strength. It's not just your ability. It's not just your wisdom. But the strength of God that comes into you to quicken something in your inside. So the, the, the trumpet is a wind instrument. And every time God blows that, is a call to action. So you hear things like, if the trumpet should make an uncertain sound, who shall prepare for battle? Because the trumpet, when it's trumped, is for what? An action. Whenever there is a sound in your spirit, you need to first discern what kind of sound is this. I remember last week, two weeks ago, I woke up in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, and I began to sense the spirit of death. I began to sense the spirit of death. And we began to war and war and war that alarm i knew it was an alarm for me to take some steps in prayers because at the time i was sensing it not too long i just saw people dying like chicken people were dropping before you know they say ah, this person has passed i said lord it seems to me like this is the body that you have placed on my chest and the next thing was to begin to seek the face of the lord you know why it's important to to respond to such burdens when they come, when there's an alarm clock in your spirit. Let me give you an example. How many of us go to work early in the morning? You set an alarm, right? So that you can wake up. This time around, this you're waking up is not to pray. But to go to somewhere where you earn. Is that not so? And you know that if you don't go to where you earn at the right time, you will be queried. How many of you know that the Holy Ghost has queried many of you? for alarms that he has set in your heart that you refuse to respond to. Are you getting me now? For the alarms that he has set in your heart, you refuse to respond. There are some of you today, there, there are alarms that your, your, your siblings are in Africa, your siblings are in Asia, but the morning you woke up, something came to your heart. You know, you know we normally call it something, but the Holy Ghost actually aroused your spirit. A name came to you, and when that name came, it was your cousin, and you never did anything about it. And then two, three days later, you, you received a call that this your cousin, this thing had happened, that thing has happened, this thing has happened, and you began to feel bad. Why are you feeling bad? There was an alarm, there was a trump in your spirit that you refused to what? Respond to. So when an alarm comes, it's a call to action. And the call to action, these alarms are released into us as burdens. Somebody say burden. I want to let you know that the burdens of the spirit are not burdensome. The burdens of the spirit are not what? Burdensome. The burden of the Lord, the yoke of the Lord is not heavy. And his burden is light. He said, for take upon you my what? Your yoke. 
and burdens and follow me. If anyone must follow the Lord, you must bear the yoke. You must take on you the burden. And he said to us, he said, my yoke is not heavy and my burden is light. In other words, the burdens of the spirit, they are not burdensome. God does not bring on you his burden to the extent that this burden will bend you over. And when we say, what's going on? He say, hey, bro, it's the burden of the Lord is breaking me. No, the burdens of the spirit never breaks a man. The burdens of the spirit rather will call a man to action. We call a man to action. So when we talk about the mobilization of the end time army, we are talking about a people that know how to pick the vibrations of the spirit that know how to tend it and know how to bring it to fruition. And there are times that God will tell you, you need to tend a body in over, over Ottawa. God will have to tell you that, hey, a revival is coming. Somebody say a revival is coming. Oh my, a revival is coming here. Somebody say a revival is coming. And God says, I want to bring about the revival. Rush in now and go begin to talk to the youth because I want to use them for revival. You see, when God says, I want to bring revival to Ottawa and I'm going to use the youth, it doesn't mean you go and sit down and Google revival in Ottawa using the youth strategy. No, that's not how to go about it. You need to first and foremost sit down with the Holy Ghost. Because the source of the information was not from Google. The source of, was from a spirit. And if it's, if it's a spirit that brought that message, then the same spirit must give you the needed strategy. Amen. What is born of God is what we stand. So the way God triggers these things, the first thing he triggers is... He releases the alarm through the trumpet. And you know the sound of the trumpet must be distinct. I'm just going to stay on the alarm tonight. And tomorrow we'll begin to look at the other metaphors that are there. You look at that trumpet. In fact, when you begin to sound the alarm on the holy mountains, you begin to gather only the same men who hear the alarm. That is why when God is mobilizing end time army, it cannot be a, a field that is for just every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's not just a place that everybody comes to. It's a selection. You heard when my brother was talking, he talked about the salt. He said there is value and there is scarcity. So God begins to, God begins to take our lives. God begins to apply our life to the systems that he wants to change. But the way he does that is by the alarms that we can pick. Are you awakened to the alarms of God? Can you put your hand on your chest and say, Lord, waken the alarm in me again. Let the alarms of the spirit be awakened. I, I kid you not. I mean it. Pray to the Lord. That Lord, let the alarms of the spirit be awakened in me again. Let the alarms be waken, awakened. Oh my God, the way alarms wake you up in your sleep to go to work, that is how God wants to wake you up to come into action. That is how the Spirit of God wants to wake you up. You know, that's how God wants to wake all of us up so that we can come alive. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So God sets the alarm. And where does he set it? He sets it in our heart. He sets an alarm clock in our heart. When you want to take decisions that are wrong, how many of you have, have lost your peace when you, want to, when you want to do something? You know, I'm trying to explain to you spiritual realities that are practical in nature. Because every spiritual reality in God is practical, can be practicalized. Our work in the spirit is, with God is invincible, but our natural life can attest to the reality of his invincibility. Am I communicating with you? So as he is invincible, he is that real to us. Amen? So, so you, you come to a place where you want to transact. Maybe you want to buy a property. And this deal looks good. And you woke up, you wanted to pay, then you lost your peace. Somebody say alarm. That's an alarm. That's the alarm clock of the spirit. He just takes it off. 
And then you are trying to say, oh no, sweetheart, we need to go in. And then you, you, you say, but, but, but how are you feeling? He said, I don't feel okay. I don't feel all right. He said, that sounds good. Call up the transaction. A friend of mine traveled all the way from Nigeria to Abu Dhabi to seal up a deal. While he was seated there, they had wonderful meeting, spoke, transacted with the lawyers, and then the next day they were supposed to sign off on the deal. And then he woke up in the morning the next day, and he had this unrest in his heart, and there was a check. Somebody say, alarm. And then he called me. He said, hey, bro, I don't think I should sign this, this deal. I said, what, what are, are the implications? implications? Do you know you what know he told me? He said, I'm not after the implications. I am only responding to the alarm in my heart. Do you know that there are people who will consider the implications and sign up the deal? Ignoring what? The alarm clock that came into their heart. And then that thing will result to trouble that they may never recover from. There are, there are issues you never, you will recover by the message of God, but there are some that you may never recover because you ignored an alarm clock. Just the way you have alarms, physically, that is how you have alarms set up in your spirit. And today I want to pray for the brothers and sisters in Canada and in this province that the alarm clock of heaven will be awakened in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, I come here as a prophet tonight and I want to speak to the territory. And I speak to the walls, I speak, I speak to the heavens, I speak to the earth in this region. That the alarms, the alarms of heaven will be reawakened again. There will be an installation of the alarm clocks of heaven around this region. That believers will come into the consciousness of what God is calling them to do in the name of Jesus Christ. That suddenly people will walk into different streets and there will be an alarm of the Holy Ghost. Somebody will walk into the churches and there will be an alarm of the Holy Ghost. There will be a release. There will be a release. There will be a release in the atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ. That people will walk into the atmosphere and when they walk in, they will hear the Lord speaking to them in the name of Jesus. You know how? The entire area, the entire place, the entire geographical location where you are planted will be wired with alarms. They are not security alarms, but spiritual alarms. Alarms that when men come into it, once, once they walk into that circuitry, there will be an awareness of what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you seen people walk into a territory and they began to cry? Have you experienced it? Have you, have you read about it? That people walked in places, they don't know what happened. They just walked into it and they began to weep. That was how I gave my life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ the day I was, tra I was traveling somewhere, I was headed somewhere. And all of a sudden we got to a place. There was a presence that came on me. And I began to weep. No preacher. Nobody dared to say to me, repent now or you die and go to hell. I was on a bike, on a motorbike. When the power of the Lord came upon me. I am talking about the alarms of heaven. That there are men and women who will pick those alarms, respond to the alarm. And recreate those alarms in different places. Such that we become men that are, are, are sharp shooters for the desired revival. You Google it. Look at the contribution of, of Europe. Look at the contribution of North America towards Christianity. But where are we today? The alarms are dying. But in the name of Jesus Christ, a people, a people galloping with fire, men and women, you all will rise and you will release those alarms again in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's one of the alarm clock, a call to action. Men that will, men that will no longer pray for themselves, Lord, give me promotion. Father, Lord, give me promotion. Promote my husband. But they will become territorial 
in nature. Their consciousness will be territorial. Help me tell your neighbor, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, when he gives it to you, he has territories in mind. The anointing of the Holy Ghost comes with territorial responsibility. It does not come with family restoration and battle. Whenever the Lord anoints a man, he anoints him with a territory in view. A territory is in view. When the Holy Ghost came, you know I said a sound is a call. The sound of a trumpet is a what? Is a call to what? Action. Let me give you another scripture. Acts chapter 2. A call to action. Whenever that sound comes, that kind of a sound is a call to action. Acts chapter 2. That's not within, but the Holy Ghost just triggered that into my spirit. That every time the Lord chooses to anoint, every time the Holy Ghost chooses to come down, he comes with a territory in view. So when the Lord anointed Jacob, you saw that Jacob released 12 sons. And of course, you, hear, you know we have what we call the territory of Naphtali. The regions of Ephraim. The regions of Joseph. So as their names were, their names were title locations. Is somebody getting me today? Are you with me? If you are here and your name is Kennedy, you are here because your name suits this territory. If you are here and your name is Abdul, you are here because there is an assignment that is tied to the name called Abdul here in Ottawa. So there has to be an alarm clock that comes out of you so that your impute will bear witness that you have an assignment here. My alarm clock, you see, the way my alarm clocks work now, if, if, I'm, if I leave this place and I fly back to Lagos, if there is danger, it will wake. That is why I'm planted. So God will not allow anything happen without giving me a clue. For the Lord will do nothing except he reveals it unto his servants. Who? The prophet. And we all are prophetic. So that's the way you know that you are planted in a place. There will be alarms that will keep coming. There will be burdens that God will keep showing you. There will be things that the Lord will keep expressing and keep revealing to you. Acts chapter 2, quickly. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Somebody say one place. They were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. Somebody say sound. It says sound the alarm. So you see, I told you that the wind, the trumpet is what? Is a wind instrument. When you blow the sound in the wind instrument, you are releasing the sound of the spirit. That's what I'm saying. And so when the spirit was going to come, how did he come? He come with a sound first. The Holy Ghost ushered in a sound. So I said to you, before revival, there will be sound. Before revival, there will be prayers. Did I say the third one? Before revival, there will be outbreak of worship. Outbreak of songs. You will not hear, ah, today when I remember how I was poor and how you brought deliverance, you will hear songs about the, the holies of holies. You will hear songs about God himself. You will hear songs about the nature of God. You will not hear songs and you will desire to be a rich man. You will hear songs and you will desire to pursue God. You will, you will hear songs and you will desire to travel. You will desire to journey. You will desire to journey far into God. Those are the kind of songs you hear when revival is coming. Not songs that will make you say, oh no, I need to buy a property now. If I don't buy a property, God is not existing. You will drop those desires and your sole goal will be that you want to be where God is. Just to be where you are is my desire. Those are, the, those are the kind of songs that you will listen to. And then revival begins to bubble out of you. He said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And he filled all the houses where they were what? Sitting. When the Holy Ghost, the sound of the Holy Ghost came, it didn't fill the men first. It took over the environment. Somebody say environment. This is how, this is how we will conquer. We will need to be territorial in our mind. We will need to be territorial in our mind. We will need to be territorial in our mind. We will need to be territorial in our mind. We will need to be territorial in our mind. Listen, every ideology is forged by people. Ideologies, belief systems, core values, cultural beliefs. 
All of these things are forged. All of these things are attained by, by, by our ability to philosophize. Either we are coming into the philosophy, the worldview of a people, or we are coming through the worldview of the kingdom. But every, every culture is shaped by somebody. Every belief system, core values are shaped by someone. So the day we make up our mind that we are becoming territorial, you see, instead of saying that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we begin to have people here who will sit down and map out this place and say, listen, guys, what is even the controlling force here? What's controlling this place? Before we go out to do evangelism, let us have brothers and sisters who are taking care of the atmosphere first. Because when the Holy Ghost came, before he landed on them, he took care of the environment. You are not with me. He took care of what? Oh my God, my time. He took care of what? He quarantined the environment. Mobilized the environment for himself before he landed on them. So every time the Holy Spirit comes, he's territorially conscious. But today we say, no, environment, don't mind the environment, let's just mind the people. That is why we preach and preach, we don't see effect. Because the environment is already rigged. And when the environment is rigged, there's nothing you can do. When an environment is rigged, did you hear what Jesus said? He said, a strong man cannot enter into the territory. A man cannot enter into the territory of a strong man until he first bites. Because there is a landlord. Somebody say landlord. There is a prince. So the way to gain entrance into that territory is to first deal with the prince. That is why... We, when we talk about mobilizing end time army, we must take into cognizance the environment that is enabling the Holy Ghost to work. And it happens to be that the will of God will be done in the earth as it is in the heaven only when the sons of heaven who are in the earth rise up. So the consciousness of territorial engagement is key. So my brother talked to you about infiltration. I am talking to you about the consciousness of engaging your territory. A man of God was called to go and labor over a territory and when he got there, he prayed for weeks and nothing happened. Anytime he prays, by the way, sir, that place you kept us is a good place. When I entered to pray, less than 20 minutes I entered. The takeoff time was very fast. I know that that place is a good environment. That's how you know a territory that is rigged with the presence of God. So you get into a system. There are some of you who have prayed. Let me give you, can I just give two, three minutes? Let me give you some examples how you know environment and why environment, atmospheres are important. There are some of you who prayed. You prayed and prayed and prayed and you know that you are fine. Then you moved out of Ottawa, okay, it has clicked. And you got into a system. All of a sudden, your eyes are seeing what you shouldn't see. But before that time, your eyes were clean. Your thoughts were pure. But how come when you move from this place, point A to point B, there was a change? Somebody say atmosphere. You just moved into an environment that is rigged. And when that environment is rigged, huh? When that environment is rigged, your thought pattern will be controlled. You will need to consciously call yourself back. That, hey, what's going on here? And then you suddenly realize that power had shifted. You are no longer in that place. And then the moment you leave that environment and you are coming back home, you drive into that place where you have been laboring, all of a sudden, your spirit begins to leave. Because this other side where you were was warfare. That place is rigged. When you want to be an end time army, you've got to wake up spiritually. So this man was praying and praying and praying on Kuber. And every time he prays, he will, he will, it will seem as though he's gaining breakthrough. And all of a sudden, the atmosphere becomes rigged and closed again. And then he slept. And then the next day when he slept, he woke up. And as he woke up, as soon as he said, Father, I thank you, he just traveled into the spirit very fast. And he was excited. And the Lord said to him, son, do not be excited. My son, Lester Sumrall, is passing by. That this labor, this shift didn't come by you. 
This shift happened because my son, Lester, is passing. So Lester was coming with a higher environment. Do you understand that? He was coming with a higher spiritual tempo and atmosphere. The way we know that there are many of you who are from Africa. When you came here, you were, you were born of fire. But when you came now, you don't pray about money. You can buy everything with credit card and pay later. So you just wake up, you buy. Your prayer life is gone. You wake up, you do things. Your alarm clocks are dead. You know, the, you know this meeting is to cause an awakening. This is why we are here. This weekend is for an awakening. Some of you need to go back and pick your accent where it fell. Accents that are falling. You need to go back and pick it. Am I communicating with you? There are many alarm clocks of the spirit that are dead. So atmospheres have been rigged with demonic spirit. Spirit of lust. Spirit that should not be controlling. Even ministers are now being rigged with, this, with that spirit. You know why? Because all of us are docile in our place. But God wants us to come back. And so, so that that atmosphere can be what? Taken. The way the atmosphere will be taken is by the second alarm. A reawakening. A, there will be a sound that will, make, that will bring discomfort to you. That, that sound is not the sound of a trumpet. It's an alarm. The second sound is an alarm. When it, when it trumps in your heart. Is either a call to an awakening or a call to reawakening. Is a call either to an awakening, you need to wake up to your, to your responsibility, or a call to reawakening. You know this responsibility, but you left it. Some of you will need to pray for Ottawa for one year, for two years, for three years. It's not because God is powerless, it's because your labors. Are walking and 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 rigging. That's the word of the spirit tonight that I'm hearing. Causing rigs in the spirit, so that men like Pastor Samuel can begin to come in and operate. We need intercessors. We need men that will have a secret place to hold this place and say, Father, the rules of the spirit here will bend and break, so that the mind and the might of God will be seen. We need we need a supernatural hand. But for there to be a supernatural hand, we need men who are awakened to righteousness. You see, that awakening is that we are awakened to righteousness. There are many people who are awakened now, but they are awakened to drunkenness. They are awakened to heaviness. They are awakened to licentious life. They are awakened to carnality. When will we have Christians who are awakened to righteousness? They are not just talking about, see, this is how they operate here. Nothing can happen. That is why we have the grace to infiltrate systems. But we need men who are awakened to the alarms of the Lord and they are taking their place in the spirit and they are standing. And they are saying, you know what? From this place to this place, I give it to you. You know when God says you are a warden? When they say you are the warden of England, what does that mean? Today we knight you. What does that mean? Today we give you this. You are the warden of this territory. We give you this region. It means that you are going to watch over that region to ensure that there is sanity, to ensure that there is no incursion, to ensure that there is no territorial violation. That is how the armies of God will and must live their lives. So I leave you with a question tonight. As I bring you the charge tomorrow, where has the Lord willed to you? Where in this region has the Lord given to me? There is a place that the Lord has given to me. I may come to Canada, I will not hear anything. But the moment I stop into Lagos, I may even go to somewhere else. And I'm not from Lagos State. I'm not from Southwest. I'm from South South. But where the Lord has given to me as my primary assignment is Southwest. So every time I sit in Southwest and I say, Lord, where are you? He will show up. Because he planted me there. Many of you think you are here to make money. I tell you it is more than that. I tell you it is more than that. You are here to rig the system. You are here to rig the atmosphere for God to be able to gain penetration. How lovely and how beautiful will it be the day you begin to see God coming in, galloping, galloping in, and you suddenly remember, ah, I prayed over this place. 
Now this place is the place where God dwells. Oh no, I prayed over this region. I'm an army of God. I prayed over this place. And you know the armies of God don't wear physical uniform. They wear spiritual uniform. Please stand on your feet. I want you to ask the Lord. I have prophetic messages that the Lord sent me to, to, pro, to declare here. And when I get to that point where I know I can declare them, I've done one now. Where I know we can declare them, we will declare them. But can we, can we hold our hands and pray one prayer? The Lord, we are asking for the spirit of revival to break out. We are asking for an outpouring, that's the word. We are asking for an outpouring of revival. The Lord Jesus, we want to see the outpouring of revival. We want to see an outpouring of revival. Not just among the black community, but among the community of the people, the Canadians, the people of God, the sons and the daughters of God. We want to see an outpouring of the spirit of revival. Oh my God, this is not the time to whistle. This is the time to actually speak and say, Lord, we want to see your revival. We want to see, we want to enter. We want to enter into this revival. That in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that your power, your grace will come like never before. The alarms of the trumpet, the wind, the alarms of the Holy Ghost coming alive again in the consciousness of people. The receptacle of your sons and daughters being animated. That oh God in the name of Jesus we cry to you. That indeed is the alarms of the spirit that we want to begin to pick the vibrations of the Holy Ghost. That the ways of the Father will be open to us again as a people. Pray to him, pray to him, pray to him. That we are crying that the atmosphere that have been read by demonic conclaves and enclaves we all got be taken over as we begin to speak about the atmosphere. New things, words of the spirit, words of authority, clouds begin to form. The cloud of God's power, the cloud of God's grace we begin to take over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The presence of God we begin to reign, rule, and take absolute charge. And as we begin to gallop together as sons and daughters, we will see your mighty hand. And the Lord I am asking, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, as your sons and daughters go 